Eliminator RC presents RCTV, your radio controlled authority. Brought to you in part by RC Pit Stop, bringing the best of RC to BC since 1989. And John's Hobbies, Toronto's local hobby store. With your host, Nick Rack. On this week's episode of RCTV, we have a cool fun float. And kids are having fun off-roading. From Winnipeg, but first, a real cool scale heli. Okay, we're here today at Toronto RC Heli Club Fun Fly. I'm here with Joel Badgecourt. Joel, nice to meet you. Now, this is a very different helicopter compared to what all the guys are flying with the 3D. What is this type of helicopter? Well, this one's a scale helicopter. Right? Why would you fly a scale heli, first of all? I like to do something a little bit different, and it's a nice showpiece. It's very relaxing, smooth flying. It doesn't bounce around like the 3D guys. And what type of heli is this? This is a model of the Bell 222. It's a fiberglass body that has a 20-year-old helicopter inside it. Wow. It's been converted to electric. The thing to keep it scale also is that it has what's called a fly barless head. If yeah, you'd... so you're missing the flies. Yeah, the big paddles that are out here. Yeah, yeah. The full-size helicopters don't have that, so this makes it look more realistic. But that mechanism gives you the stability for the flight. So is it a little bit more difficult to fly? Do you have to be a little bit more careful, more experienced with this helicopter? This one is actually just as easy to fly as any fly barred helicopter because it has an electronic mechanism inside for electronic stabilization. So like a gyroscope? It's called a three-axis gyro. The name of it is a V-bar. They work fantastic. And how, how much easier is it to fly like an electric heli compared to, like say this was a gas powered one, would it be more difficult to fly? I like the electrics a lot better because they're clean, they don't leave that big smoke trail that, again, doesn't look scale. Yeah, because the real heli doesn't do that. Right, and they're quiet. When the thing winds up, the gear noise is all you hear from the electric system, and it sounds like the turbine of the full-size helicopter. Now, how long did it take to build this and convert this? Well, just in my spare time, um, painting is what takes most of the time. The kit comes as a completed body, so mm -hmm. I didn't have to do any fiberglass work. So just the painting and so on, it, f it was finished over a winter time, so six to nine months. Now, also I saw you have beautiful retracts on in here, and uh, th was that an added feature that you had to put in yourself? There's place where to mount servos and the retractable me mechanism and so on. They work very smoothly, right? And I noticed when you're flying, you're hovering right in front of yourself, you know, you can see the, how beautiful and smooth they are. Uh, they really open up and close. Now, what is it like flying it? Is it, is, it, is it quite simple? I mean, you can't do all the aerobatics, but I mean, for the scale reasons, is it quite, quite fun to fly, though? Actually, it's capable of doing all the aerobatics, but I don't do that because the full-size helicopter would never do it. Yeah. So I like to fly it in a scale fashion. You figure one day you're probably going to maybe put a pilot in there or something, or do you have the room to do it? I don't think I'm going to add anything more to this one. What I'm going to do is take one of my other bigger helicopters and make a scale of a... My subject I'm planning for is an Augusta 109. And what's that? Was that a passenger one as well? It's very similar to this. It also has retracts, but it doesn't have the wings out here. Mm -hmm. So the retracts, the wheels on that one will fold right inside the body. Yeah, since we're talking about that, we were mentioning earlier about the, the winglets. Does that really improve the balance of the helicopter and stability? Well, they have two purposes, really. Um, a place to put the wheels mm -hmm. so they can fold up and be aerodynamically hidden. And with a full size, they actually work like wings. So they will help with the lift and they make the aircraft fly a little more efficiently. Yeah, so they're actually convex and concave, just like a real wing then. And does that help in actually turning the helicopter and...? Well, the controls are still going to be exactly the same as all other helicopters. Mm -hmm. the, the wings that are on here have no moving parts at all, not like the wings of an airplane mm -hmm. or a fixed wing. 
So all they're really doing, like I say, is adding a little bit of lift when they fly. Okay. And uh, a place to hide the wheels. Okay, great. Well, there you have it, folks. Beautiful scale heli, right? Joe, it was fantastic meeting you today, right? I love the way it flies, right? Folks, that's what you got to do. If you're maybe you're not into doing the 3D stuff and you're a little bit intimidated by it, get yourself into maybe something a little bit scale where you're just going to learn how to fly it, right? Learn how to hover, fly around the field a little bit, and have a lot of fun. Maybe that's your forte. Okay, folks, stick around. We'll be right back. I'm Doc RC for RC TV. People are always asking me, "Hey, how long does it take my battery pack to charge?" If you got a 5,000 milliamp battery pack and a 5 amp charger, if every amp equals 1,000 milliamp, hey, 5 divided by 5 equals 1. It's going to take you one hour to charge that pack.